last time we discussed reflection in wave optics part 4 we are going to discuss refraction changing of path of the ray of light when medium changes is known as refraction sin i upon sin r is equal to mu 2 with respect to 1 is constant this is snell's law the laws of refraction include snell's law Velocity of light in the rarer medium is greater than the velocity of light in the denser medium. Incident ray, refracted ray, normal lie in the same plane. Incident ray and refracted ray lie on the opposite side of the normal. Now let us discuss refraction of a plane wavefront at a plane surface. This is the denser medium. The rarer medium having refractive index mu 1. Denser medium having refractive index mu2. XY is a refracting surface. These two are the rays of light. AB is the incident wave front. A dash over here will start refracting. A dash N is a normal. This is the angle of incidence between the incident ray and the normal a dash b dash is again the incident wave front b dash c now by the time the ray has reached c a dash already starts emitting a wavelet so we will take b dash c but the radius when it enters the medium becomes less. Therefore, radius is less than B dash C is chosen. Then we have B dash C is actually V1 into T, which is greater than AD, which is V to T. So, we start drawing the wavelet with radius less than B dash C. So that's the wavelet. We draw a tangent to the wavelet at point D. We have the refracted waves like this. These are the rays of light. So we have DC as a refracted wave front. Therefore, R is the angle of refraction between the normal and the refracted ray at S. This one comes out to be I because the wave front and wave normal are always perpendicular to each other. So N A dash B dash is 90 minus I. As a result, we get B dash A dash C as I. Similarly, on the other side, we have R here. So we have got two triangles here, A dash B dash C and A dash D C, which we will consider after some time. This is the refracted wavefront again, SR. The velocity is V1 in medium 1, V2 in medium 2. Now let us take the diagram again. So we have triangles B dash A dash C and triangle A dash C D. Sin i is equal to b dash c upon a dash c and sin r is equal to a dash d upon a dash c. Therefore, sin i by sin r is equal to v1 t upon v2 t that is equal to v1 upon v2. By definition of refractive index, sin i upon sin r is equal to v1 upon v2. We divide by C on both the places that is V1 upon C, V2 upon C. So we get that as mu2 with respect to air upon mu1 with respect to air that is mu2 with respect to 1. This is Snell's law which is proved using Huygens principle. I is greater than R therefore sin I is greater than sin R. Sin I upon sin R is greater than 1. Therefore Mu2 with respect to 1 is greater than 1. V1 is greater than V2. Therefore, velocity of light in the rarer medium is greater than in the denser medium. 
This is one of the most important thing that was proved by Huygens' wave theorem. Note, refractive index Ri can be represented as mu21 that is also equal to n2 with respect to 1. Now let us talk about the change in wavelength of light when going from one medium to another for normal incidence. So these are the rays which are coming normally on the surface PQ. This is the incident wave front AB which gets refracted to A dash B dash C. CD goes to C dash D dash. Similarly, EF goes to E dash F dash in medium 2. These are the refracted wave from the rays we can say. Now let's see the change in wavelength of light while going from one medium to another for oblique incidence. This is the incident ray. The wave front AB goes as A dash B dash. CD goes as C dash D dash. EF goes as E dash F dash. So now let's take the equations. AB reaches surface PQ at T is equal to 0. Wave from C, D reaches PQ at T is equal to capital T. Distance is equal to lambda 1. In medium 1, T is equal to lambda 1 upon V1. Wave from C dash, D dash reaches PQ, T is equal to capital T. Distance is equal to lambda 2 in medium 2. Therefore, T is equal to lambda 2 upon V2. Velocity in a medium is proportional to wavelength in that medium. So from 1 and 2, we have lambda 2 upon V2 is equal to lambda 1 upon V1. Lambda 2 is equal to lambda 1, V2 upon V1 that is equal to lambda 1, N1 upon N2. If medium 1 is vacuum, N1 is 1, N2 is N, V1 is C, lambda 1 is lambda naught, lambda 2 is lambda, substituting the earlier equation, lambda is equal to lambda naught V2 upon C, that is lambda naught upon N. So the speed and wavelength change are inversely proportional to the relative refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first. From 3, V1 upon V2 is equal to lambda 1 upon lambda 2. But we can write using formula for velocity, V1 upon V2 is equal to N1 lambda 1 upon N2 lambda 2. Therefore, comparing 4 and 5, we have N1 upon N2 is equal to 1. Therefore, N1 is equal to N2. Thus, the frequency of the wave remains same even if the medium changes. This should be noted. So, that's all for refraction. Thank you.